Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin Wassalatu wassalamu ala nabiyana Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in Amma ba'd In our previous class We were reading what the author he mentioned Rahimahullah ta'ala With regards to asking questions With regards With regards to asking questions And uh, the person who has a question Then indeed he will, he will ask and those who do not know the obligations that are upon them or the right understanding in a particular issue or circumstance, then it's incumbent for him for him to ask. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ That you must ask the people of knowledge if, if you do not know. So no doubt to ask a question whenever one, he is unaware of something, this is from the beneficial means of learning and a great obligation and requirement and something that is praiseworthy if it is performed properly. It is if it's performed pr properly. And even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned shifa'ul a'i as su'al, that the cure for ignorance is a question, meaning to ask whenever one he does not know. Whenever one he does not know. So if he does not know something, he will not proceed and act in uh, upon ignorance. Rather, he will, he will stop and he will not speak, nor will he act until he finds the proper position an understanding with regards to that. The intent from the author, rahimahullah ta'ala, is to clarify that there are proper times and circumstances and situations to ask, and that the student, he should pursue those times and those circumstances and situations, and he should avoid asking uh, the questions in the wrong time, uh, at the wrong time, or in the wrong sitting, or in the wrong gathering, or whenever it's not proper. So to learn these affairs will be beneficial for him to have his question answered properly, and for him to uh, benefit, and for him to benefit. And if he were to ask at the wrong time, then maybe this would be a reason for the teacher to turn away from him and not answer, and not answer. Or if he did not have the proper manners, maybe he'll simply get his question answered and he will not have any extra benefit. As for the one who pursues the proper time and he has the proper etiquettes and manners, then many times the teacher will benefit him with more than what he asked. And he will be generous and kind with the knowledge and grant him uh, and, uh, and teach him and clarify for him uh, other details that are clear for him that he may not understand if he did not understand the question that he's asking. So that he'll increase him yani from, uh, from, uh, from, from his kindness yani, and from yani his, his, his blessing. The blessing that he has of knowledge would increase him and give him more. This is whenever the situation comes. Along with that, he mentioned rahimahullah ta'ala that one, he will not be shy to ask. So he will not back down from asking and be shy and the likes like this, nor will he be arrogant and too proud to ask because both of these affairs here will prohibit a person from learning. And uh, likewise, he will not uh, ask at the wrong time or be rude in the manner that he asks. So he will not be so shy. And in haya la la yahmiluhu ala tark al-su'al, lakin al-haya al-haya al-sahi yahmiluhu ala husn al-su'al, wa ala ta'addubi fi al-su'al. So the, he will not have shyness or bashfulness in the manner that it will carry him to leave off asking the question, but he will have shyness that will carry him to ask the question in the proper manner and in the proper time and to address the issue in, in, in the best way, in the best way with the best etiquette. So this uh, type of shyness now will be, will be praiseworthy. As for if it carried him to leave off asking entirely until he remained ignorant, then this is definitely not praiseworthy not praiseworthy and to be arrogant and to be too proud to ask in the first place then no doubt likewise this is uh, this is not praiseworthy so in our previous class he mentioned this benefit here and he says uh, again um, that the one يعني من رقى وجهه عند السؤال the one who is too shy He's too shy to ask at the time of asking a question, meaning he will not ask the question because he's shy and is afraid that somebody may say something bad about him because he does not know or the likes like this or think bad about him. This here carries him, yani to not ask. And his deficiency and his weakness in knowledge and the likes will become apparent whenever he's gathered, whenever he's gathered with the men. Whenever he's gathered with the men. Yani, then his reality will be, will be clear because the men, they will have knowledge and they will have understanding and they will have principles and foundations that they're working with and those who do not have them become clear whenever they speak 
and whenever they act, and whenever they move, and whenever they sit, and whenever they stand, and whenever they walk. So whenever the, the men are gathered, then a person, he is known by his demeanor, and, his, and, and by his etiquettes, and by his manners, and especially by his speech, by his speech. So the one who did not ask, and he remained ignorant, this will be the issue for him. He will become exposed eventually. He will become exposed eventually. As for the question, then indeed it's the key. It's the key to knowledge. And as Zuhri, he mentioned, Rahimahullah, he died in 124. Muhammad ibn Muslim uh, ibn Shihab al Zuhri. Rahimahullah, he says, Al ilmu khazain. Al ilmu khazain. Taftatihuha al mas'ala. Al ilmu khazain. That knowledge is treasures. And he treasures vast treasures of knowledge. Taftatihuha as al mas'ala. And uh, the means to open that is by asking. And by asking. I mean, the keys to that. The keys to uh, the knowledge that are treasures uh, of knowledge, but they're any they are behind doors, any they're closed, except for for the one who comes and asks, and he seeks that, and he looks for it, and he looks for it. So uh, this is the case: a person he will not be too shy to ask, but he will have shyness enough to carry him to ask in the proper time, and the proper manner, and the likes like this, and he will not be too proud to ask likewise either, and also he will not be hasty in asking or in learning. And also, he will, uh, he will not be lazy. So, we have seen the narration of Mujahid, rahimahullah, he died in the year 104. Mujahid ibn Jabr, لا يتعلم مستحيا ولا متكبر. And in Al-Bukhari, he, he mentioned this in his authentic collection, Ta'aliqan. That the one who is shy, he will not learn, nor the one who is arrogant. And the people of knowledge, they add along with that. And he, along with that, ولا كسور ولا عجول. And likewise, the one who is lazy and the one who is hasty. These types of people here, they will not be able to truly obtain knowledge in the manner that is required. So after this, the author, he says, وَإِذَا قَالَ اللَّهُ الْأُسْتَادِ فَهِمْتَ فَلَا يَقُولْ نَعَمْ فَلَا يَقُولْ نَعَمْ حَتَّى يَتَضِحَ لَهُ الْمَقْسُودُ إِضَاحًا جَرِيًّا لِأَلَّا يَكْذِبَ وَيَفُوتُهُ الْفَهَمْ لِأَلَّا يَكْذِبَ وَيَفُوتَهُ الْفَهَمْ وَلَا يَسْتَحِيَ مِنْ قَوْلِ لَمْ أَفْهَمْ لأن استثاقه يحصل له مصالح آجلة وآجلة وآجلة. So he says now, and if the teacher says to him, did you understand? أفهمت؟ أفهمت؟ If the teacher says to, to the student, did you understand? Then he should not say yes. He should not say yes until he knows what is intended clearly. And he says yes upon knowledge, and he's truthful in that. So if the teacher asks the student, أفهمت؟ well, is it, is it clear for you? Did you understand? The, te the, stu the student, he will not say yes unless he truly understands and it's really clear for him. And it's really clear for him. This is related to that which has proceeded about being shy, uh, about being shy or being arrogant. And, he, and then, uh, that was with regards to the student asking a question. But now here we have the teacher asking a question. I need to check on the student. Did he understand or not? So sometimes this will occur. Any of the teacher may say to the students in general, did you understand? Or to one of them specifically, did you understand? And possibly the student really, he didn't understand. But he just uh, goes along with that and he says, Na'am, fahimtu. Yes, I understood. But in reality, he didn't understand. Maybe he's just going along or maybe because he's shy that the other people uh, in the gathering uh, may look down upon him or maybe he, he's the, he may feel like I'm the only one who didn't understand and he's shy now to, to delay the people or he doesn't want the teacher to think he doesn't understand or that he's slow in learning or whatever the case uh, may be or the whispers that may cross his mind and all of this could cause him to say yes I understand whenever he really did not understand whenever he really did not understand so this is the topic now about this issue here this is important this is important uh, so if he's asked, the student is asked, did you understand? He will not say yes, unless he truly understood. And he will not be shy to say, no, actually, I didn't understand. Can you repeat it again? Like this, if that's the time for that. And if the teacher says, uh, did you understand? And he asked this question, and uh, the student did not understand, he will say, la, ma fahimtu. You know, I didn't understand. It's not clear for me. And can you repeat it again? Can you say it again like this? This is whenever the teacher brings the issue up like this. So he will say, yes, I understood whenever it's clear for him and he truly understood. And if not, then he will not say that. He says, وَلَا يَسْتَحِي مِنْ قَوْلِهِ لَمْ أَفْهَمْ He will not be shy to say, I, do not, I did not understand. And he, whenever this question is brought, because it will save him from falling into lying and also from misunderstanding. 
He will not say yes unless it's truly clear for him the, the intent, yani, that he understands it clearly, in order to not lie, and in order for the understanding or the proper understanding to not get by him. And so therefore he will not be shy to say, I do not understand. And the fact that he is reliable in this, and, and whenever he says this, and yani, I do not understand, this will bring about him great benefits yani, that are hastened now and, this, and now and later. Benefits now in the present time and likewise benefits for him later. Benefits and advantages. Masari, ajila wa ajila. So he says, from in the ajila, hivdu al masala, wa salama to whom in kadibin, wa nifakin bi ifhari, bi ifhari hi fahma ma lam yakun fahimahu. Fahimahu. So the hasten benefits that he will have by being truthful whenever he's asked and saying, no, I didn't understand, if he did not understand, then uh, the hasten benefits or the benefits that he will have yani, at that moment is the fact that he will memorize and learn the issue. He will memorize, he will memorize and learn the issue because the teacher most uh, likely will repeat it to him and he will say it to him again. And uh, if the teacher is uh, clever and, and proficient and uh, the teacher and the student didn't understand this time, then the teacher, he will present the issue in another manner. And if the, teacher, if the student didn't understand it the, in the first aspect, then the teacher, he will strive hard to explain the same issue, but from another, as, from another aspect. This is whenever the teacher is proficient, and, he, and he's able to, uh, to visualize these issues from above and see them from all aspects. So if he presented it this way and he didn't understand, a proficient teacher, he will say, okay, I'll present it this way. And then hopefully he'll understand. And if he didn't understand, he will mention it in another light until the issue is, uh, uh, is encompassed. And uh, the, at this time, hopefully the the student will understand. So this will happen for him, for that student who says, I do not know. Actually, I didn't understand, or it's not entirely clear for me. And the likes like this. So this is the benefit that he gets. Also, he'll be saved from falling into lying and falling into hypocrisy by making it apparent or showing that he understands something he did not understand. So this is the type of lying. He didn't understand. And then when he's asked, did you understand? Yes, I understand. Yes, I understood. Oh, yes, it's clear for me. So this is a type of lying, and he's saying likewise. This is, could be considered a type of hypocrisy because he's 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 displaying outwardly something that he does not have inwardly. He's displaying outwardly something that he really he does not have inwardly, and he did not truly understand. So then he says, uh, uh, also, women ha wuthuk Likewise, along with that, you know, from these benefits that he will receive, is that the, the teacher will, will trust him. You know, the teacher will, will trust him. He will have, he'll have a relationship of trust with the teacher because he's being honest and he's being truthful. And he, with uh, the fact that the student is, is concerned in this manner with the knowledge, like he will not just let it go by or lie or be deceptive or be shy or the likes like this, whether he has a desire to, uh, to learn. And so therefore the teacher will realize that and he will have respect for the, for the student. And likewise, maybe the desire of the teacher will be stronger to teach that particular student because he sees that he's honest and truthful and he wants to learn. Because he sees that he's honest and truthful and wants to learn. Likewise, what will be apparent for that, for the teacher as well is that the, the student, he has a complete mind and he has strong intelligence. He's not from those weak-hearted or weak-minded people that will just uh, say something that they do not mean. And likewise, this will be a display of his piety, meaning the student, the teacher will realize this likewise from the student that he was, he was pious and that he feared Allah and he did not lie and did not display something that he did not have. And likewise, he will realize this as well. He will realize as well that the student has the ability to, to, to control his own self, to control his self. And he will milkihi and that he can control himself. And this is from the great attributes of the righteous, that they control themselves, and they control their tongue specifically. They control their emotions, and they control their tongue specifically. This is, this is a case of that, controlling himself, and they're not just letting his soul run with him. Brother, he will say, no, I didn't understand. He will say, that not for him too. No, I didn't understand. It's not clear for me. Can you repeat it for me? And again, this is whenever this, this situation arises and likewise he will realize any you know, the teacher that he is free from hypocrisy then he says well mean that ajila and from the, the the benefits that will come about later any that will be along with him 
هذه طريقة المرضية والأخلاق الرضية. So he says along with that, يعني then uh, that which is correct and that which is that which is correct or the truth, and he will be affirm with him in his heart always. And he meaning he meaning whenever he's studying something. And then he does not know, and he says he does not know, then the teacher will inform him and teach him until he knows. And the one who told the people, I don't know, then they're going to teach him until he knows. But the one who says, I know, I know, I know, they're going to ask him, They're going to keep asking him and asking him until he does not know. He loses his mind. And so the point is that uh, to say that you do not know, this brings these benefits. Anyone ever. You do not know. So now he will learn. So that right understanding will be firm in his heart and with him always. With him always. Because he's somebody searching for the truth. And likewise, he'll become accustomed to this, uh, this pleasing way and this noble uh, and pleasing uh, manner and etiquette. Manner and etiquette. And the people of not as they mentioned about uh, the, these affairs, the issues of, of La Adri. And they have come, and uh, we discussed them previously, some of them, but uh, from that is that the people of knowledge, they will say uh, the, a person, a man, that a man, a person of knowledge, a student, for example, if he is uh, negligent with regards to saying, I do not know, then he will receive his death blow. And he meaning that this would be a great means for him uh, to, to be misled or to go astray or to fall into sin, and the likes like this, and he claiming and that, 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 that he does not know. He will not say, I do not know, meaning he'll eventually be speaking about Allah without knowledge. And this is from the greatest uh, of all sins and from the greatest traps or footsteps of shaitan that you say about Allah that which you do not know. And that you say about Allah that which you do not know. And you do not follow the footsteps of shaitan because he is a clear enemy for you and he does not order you with anything except for indecency and vulgarness. And to say about Allah that which you do not know. And to say about Allah that which you do not know. So this is from that aspect. Did you understand? If he says, I understand, he should have understood. As for if he said yes and he did not understand, now we're getting into this realm, as he's mentioning here, falling into a type of, of lying and, and hypocrisy and, uh, and missing out the benefit and the purpose of the lesson in the first place. He says, وَعَنْ خَرِيلْ وَعَنْ الْخَرِيلْ إِبْنِ أَحْمَدْ الْخَرِيلْ إِبْنِ أَحْمَدْ الْفَرَاهِيدِ رَحِيمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالِهِ He died in the year 170. He's the great teacher of Sibawai. Sibawai from the greatest scholars of Lua. And he, this is from his greatest teacher. Uh, Al-Khalil ibn Ahmed Al-Farahidi And he was from uh, He was from Ahl Sunnah And likewise yani From the, the scholars uh, Of the Sunnah And from his teachers Khalil ibn Ahmed Was Ayyub al-Sikhtiyani Ayyub al-Sikhtiyani He died in the year 131 From the great scholars of Hadith And from the great imams of the Sunnah He was a teacher of Khalil ibn Ahmed And Khalil ibn Ahmed Was a teacher of Sibawai so from here, many of the people of knowledge mentioned about Sibawai and who kana Sunniyan, and he was upon the methodology of Ahl Sunnah, and he, which is and he, uh, a great benefit. Many of the people who were busy with uh, science of the Arabic language specifically had fallen into some types of deviation and creed and the likes like that. But Alhamdulillah, inshallah, Sibawai, he was free from that. And from that is that his teacher was Al Khalil ibn Ahmed, and his teacher was Hayyub al Sikhtiyani, Rahmatullahi al Jamiyan. This is an indication, likewise, of the great benefit of having a noble and a good and righteous teacher who has the proper creed and proper belief and proper methodology because that affects the student. The people of Nara, as they mentioned, that uh, if, uh, uh, if, uh, if an individual were to study Al-Aqidah al wasitiyah for example, which is a book of the creed of Ahl Sunnah with regards to the Sifat of Allah Azza wa Jal specifically, if he studied this book here uh, with Ikhwani, he will become Ikhwani. Whenever he's done with the book, he will come out and he's Ikhwani. يَخْرُجُ مِنْ هَذَا دَارِسْ إِخْوَانِيًا You understand that? And he's studying the book of the Sunnah. He could study, for example, Usul al-Sunnah by Imam Ahmed. But he's going to study that with a Khariji. Somebody who's affected by it, he's going to come out Khariji. The Usul al-Thalatha. 
by, by the, the great Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, but he studied with the wrong person. He's going to come out with the creed of that person. He's going to decorate that and he's going to misinterpret those affairs until uh, it seems good for him. Like the, like the Yehud, they're going to decorate and mix up the, 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 the truth with the falsehood until maybe a person will be affected by that. So this is something that's very dangerous. So no doubt the teacher, he has an effect on his student in creed and belief first and foremost. And likewise, the methodology and manners. And even sometimes we'll find that in the books of Nahu. And the, it's not about creed. It's not, it's not about <coughs> manhaj. But you will find deviations in creed introduced in the books of Nahu. You will find that there, negating the sifat. And the likes like this, or in Balaba, and the likes like this. In the, They'll say, for example, in this issue in Balawa, that's called Ijaz, whenever things are, are summarized in a beautiful manner. And it's, and it's no doubt from the aspects of, of, of eloquence, but from the aspects of Ijaz is Hadf, that sometimes parts of speech will be deleted. They'll use this right here in order to negate the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. With a Ja'a Rabbuka, they say Ja'a Amr Rabbika. So they say that Allah, and what they're trying to say is that Allah, He doesn't come. So they negate the Sifa of Majid from Allah Azza wa Jal by the likes of these affairs. So if a person, he studied the Arabic language, just the Arabic language, or a book from the books of those people at the hands of somebody who was not qualified, then maybe he'll be affected by that, or he'll be a mis these affairs will be misinterpreted for him. So this is very important, again, to be cautious where one learns from, and this is an example of that. So the teacher, yani, who is from Ahlul Sunnah, he will clarify that this is falsehood, and they're trying to negate yani, this person here. He was on the creed of the Mu'tazila, or the Jahmiyyah, or who's affected by these ideas and these thoughts like this, and this is not right, and what is correct is this, that Allah Azza wa Jal, Yaji Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Majiyan, Yaliku Bi Jalalihi Wa Azamatihi Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Like this, and also they do the same thing with the Istiwa, and all of these affairs are well known. So again, this has a great effect on the student, on the student. And also there's another example there of the one who learns from the books only. So even if he didn't have a teacher, but he learned from the book only, maybe he'll be affected by that likewise, and he'll misunderstand that. And he, because he will read that based upon yani, what he has from little principles, so on and so forth. In any case, here we have Khalil ibn Ahmed, rahimahullah, yani from, uh, the, from, the, from the Salaf. He says, مَنْزِلَةُ الْجَهْلِ بَيْنَ الْحَيَاءِ وَالْأَنَفَةِ بَيْنَ الْحَيَاءِ وَالْأَنَفَةِ that uh, the, the ignorance, the, the, the station or the position of ignorance is between shyness and arrogance. Between shyness and arrogance. And either he, shyness is going to carry him to be ignorant, like which has preceded, or arrogance and, and being too proud and boastful is going to carry him to be too ignorant. And he, uh, this is similar to the narration of Mujahid. Rahimahullah, he says, وَيَنْبَغِي إِذَا سَمِعَ الْأُسْتَادُ يَقُولُ مَسْأَلَةً أَوْ يَحْكِيَ أَوْ يَحْكِي حِكَايَةً وَهُوَ يَحْفَظُهَا أَنْ يُسْغِيَ لَهَا إِسْغَاءَ مَنْ لَا يَحْفَظُهَا This is also from the noble manners uh, of the student of knowledge, rather from uh, the noble manners of a man in general, or a person of the sunnah, yani, and the likes like this. This is from, uh, from the Al-Adab uh, al with Muru'a. Uh, that he says that uh, if he hears the teacher saying uh, something or mentioning an issue or narrating a narration and the likes like this from the affairs that the student already memorized and learned, something that he already knows, he will listen to it as if he has never heard it before. He will listen to it as if he has never heard it before. And he, he, will, he will not listen to it in the manner as if he already knows. And this is from the complete uh, humbleness. Humbleness. And this issue here likewise requires uh, for a person to be able to control himself. For a person to be able to control his tongue, to control himself. Because many times maybe a person, he will hear something, somebody mentioning something, and then he will uh, want to go along with him. He need to display that he knows, or to let the people know that he knows, or to let the teacher know that he knows. And the like like this. So this is a, an aspect of how the, cur the, how the intention can be, cur be, can be corrupted. When somebody is talking about something, and then, uh, then the person, he, he's mentioning the same thing. I yani need to clarify to the people around him that, that he knows. It's been narrated from Ata, uh, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Ata ibn Abi Rabah, he died in the year 114. And this narration has proceeded, but again, it's uh, suitable now. He says, Inna shab, yatahadathu bi hadithin fa astami'u lahu ka'anni lam asma' wa laqan sami'tuhu qabla an yulad. 
He said that Verity, a young man, he will narrate to, to me to a narration. He will narrate a narration to me and a, a, a hadith to me. And I will listen as if I never heard it before. And indeed, I heard it before he was even born. Indeed, I heard the narration before he was even born. And he, so this is and he from the good manners. If he's able to do that with a young man, then how about the teacher who's, who he's learning from and who he honors and respects? And if he's able to control himself and he, in the face of a young man who was much younger than him and lower than him in status, then imagine how he would be able to check himself in the face of somebody who he learns from and honors and respects. Likewise, it's been narrated from Ata. Rahimahullah, he says, إِنِّي أَسْمَعُ الْحَدِيثِ مِنَ الرَّجُلِ وَنَا أَعْلَمُ مِنْهُ فَأُرِيهِمْ مِنْ نَفْسِي أَنِّي لَا أُحْسِنُ مِنْهُ شَيْئًا He said that indeed I will hear a man narrating a narration and I am more knowledgeable than him but I will show them any meaning the people around me that I do not know anything about this and I will, I, will, I will act like this I will act like this and this is very beneficial and to, 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 to learn especially for example with the youth as he mentioned here with the youth and, he, and, uh, and to listen to them uh, as if it's the first time you heard it and to make them feel Yani happy and good that they're narrating and they're telling you, especially if they're coming with a benefit. They're coming to you, your child is coming to you with a benefit in the religion that they heard in class or that they read in a book or that they heard in a lecture or the likes like this. They're bringing a benefit. Maybe it's something that you already know, but no doubt it's a benefit. So you listen and, you, and you're happy with that. And then likewise, they will be happy to tell you. And he, because if they come happy to tell you, listen, Abi, I have this benefit. Umi, I have this benefit. And the likes like this. And then you're like, man, I already heard that. I already heard that, or that, that that's an old benefit, like this. And we, we heard that. Now he's going to break, he had the ragba in the beginning, and now you're going to break that ragba. No, you don't act like that. Rather, you're, Allahu Akbar, this is a great benefit. And many times, the best benefit that one hears in one day is something he already knows. وَذِكْرَ تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Any of the reminder benefits the believers. So sometimes it's not necessary to have new information, but to remind, to be reminded of something that we already know, to be firm upon that. To be firm upon that, to be steadfast upon that. So in any case, this is this is the issue. Likewise, here with uh, regards to, with regards to the teachers, with regards to the teacher and the class. Also, it has been narrated fra, from Khalid ibn Safwan. He's from the Tabjin. He died in the, around one hundred, and this narration uh, or the, the, these narrations here are collected by Al Khatib al Baghdadi in his book Al Jami'. And in that chapter, Bab al Sama' wa Adab al Sama' So he said, إِذَا رَأَيْتَ مُحَدِّثًا يُحَدِّثُ حَدِيثًا قَدْ سَمِعْتَهُ أَوْ يُخْبِرُ خَبْرًا قَدْ, عَلِم قَدْ عَلِمْتَهُ فَلَا تُشَارِكْهُ فِيهِ حِرْصًا, حرصاً عَلَى أَنْ يُعْلِمَ مَنْ حَضْرَكَ أَنَّكَ قَدْ عَلِمْتَهُ فَإِنَّ, فإن ذَلِكَ خِفَّةٌ وَسُوءُ أَدَبٍ فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ خِفَّةٌ وَسُوءُ أَدَبٍ He said, رحمه الله, that if you see somebody talking, يُحَدِّثُ حَدِيثًا مُحَدِّثًا يُحَدِّثُ حَدِيثًا and he's someone narrating a narration or somebody speaking about something. And he's somebody speaking about something or, or mentioning some information that you already know. Do not participate with him in that. And he let him finish his speech. And he do not participate with him in that. And he's saying and he, in reality, why? Because now it's like you are striving hard or you have diligence to let everybody around you know that you already know what is being discussed. That you already know what's being discussed. And if that was the case, this is having a weak, a weak mind or weak heart and it's bad manners. And it's bad manners. So this is something that, uh, again, requires uh, determination and striving against the soul. Because sometimes any person, maybe he's excited. <laughs> he's excited to talk about certain topics or issues and he'll want to you know, proceed and it's not his time to proceed. Or he wants to say something and it's not his time to speak. And so to be able to check oneself and the likes of these circumstances. So you have a teacher, for example, teaching you uh, some particular issues that you, you already know. So the manners here is to be silent and act like you do not already know. And to, uh, to be silent, to act like you do not already know. And this requires, Yanni, for a person to have, uh, as I mentioned, strong determination and willpower to fight his soul. And that which will aid and be the greatest means to do that is to remember Allah. And to act like one does not know for the sake of Allah. For the sake of Allah. And to fight that riyah that's, try, that's trying to grow up in his heart. That's trying to, 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 to form up at that time and just leave that off for the sake of Allah. And uh, then, uh, be, be, because many times, why would he want the teacher to know or the people to know that he knows? To get praise. And he, so that you know, they know that he knows. Because if they know that he knows, then you know, they're going to say, MashaAllah, he knows. Right? And they're going to have some type of honor or respect for him. 
But if he's sincere and he remembers that that which the people think about him is in the hands of Allah Azza wa Jal, then he will seek the pleasure of Allah and he will try to observe these manners. And then in this manner, the, the people, they will, they will honor him. And the honor will come from the decree of Allah. So seek, seeking the reward from Allah again, this requires striving. So he says, uh, وَيَنْبَغِي أَنْ يَكُونَ حَرِيصًا عَلَى تَعَلُّمِي مُوَاضِبًا لَهُ فِي جَمِيعِ أَوْقَاتِهِ لَيْلًا وَنَهَارًا حَضَرًا وَسَفْرًا وَلَا يُذْهِبُ مِنْ أَوْقَاتِهِ شَيْئًا فِي غَيْرِ الْعِلْمِ فِي غَيْرِ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا بِقَدْرِ مَا لَا بُدَّ لَهُ مِنْهُ مِنْ أَكْلٍ وَنَوْمٍ وَرَاحَةٍ So he says now uh, it's incumbent likewise for the student to be very diligent to be very diligent with regards to learning and that he will make muwazaba and he will be consistent and persistent he will be consist consistent and persistent with regards to seeking knowledge at all times in the daytime and in the nighttime while he's a resident and while he's traveling and in, in, in every circumstance and situation in every circumstance and situation and yeah uh, with regards to traveling and seeking knowledge uh, i know some, some benefits from, from some of our mashaykh that they would mention whenever, whenever, whenever a person is traveling, he should never travel except that he has along with him Fath al Majid and Bulug al Muram. And, and, and there's about six other books that they mention. And I remember these specific, specific books right now Fath al Majid and Bulug al Muram. Like the, if you travel, you travel with these books with you and, 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 and a handful of other books. I mean, the, these ones you, you can't bring your whole library. Right? But these books you don't leave at home, you travel with them. These books you don't leave at home, you travel with them. Maybe one of them he already memorized, Bulug Maram, but he will have the book with him. And to review and to go over or, or in the likes like this. And uh, also uh, from the beneficial means of seeking knowledge that one, he will have one book that is his main book and of that particular science. And he will take all the benefits and notes that he has from different classes that go in these places and he'll put it there. He will put it there. So he will have that particular book with him to review and to go over. And the likes like this, Fat al Majid, which is from the best explanations of the Book of Tawheed, and, and a number uh, of other books. Inshallah, I'll review that and mention it uh, again. Bi'ithnillahi ta'ala. But the point is now that he will dedicate himself entirely at all times. He's saying daytime, nighttime, when he's, whenever he's a resident, whenever he's traveling. All, at all times, he's dedicated to to seeking knowledge and to learning and to benefiting and to reviewing. He says that he will not do spend any of his times. He will not use he will not let any of his times go away. And other than knowledge. Except for the amount that he has to he has to uh, use or let go and, uh, and other than seeking knowledge from eating and from sleeping and from resting. It's been mentioned from some of the salaf that they would say the, the, the worst time of their day, the, 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 the worst time of their day, the time that they detest the most is whenever they have to eat because it deters them from seeking knowledge and from benefiting and uh, it's something that they have to do. Even some of the salaf has been mentioned about them that they would choose to have the type of meals that are very easy to swallow and to eat, like some hard bread that they can, it doesn't take long to chew it and to eat it, and they will just take their nourishment and move along. They will just take their nourishment and move along in order to benefit. And there's lines of poetry about this likewise. They say, Akhir ilmi, asri fi thalatha, al mashi, wal akli wal kitaba. Ya akhir ilm, O brother of knowledge, asri fi thalatha. You have to be fast and doing three. Al akil, wa al mashi, wal kitaba. In eating and in walking and in writing. And in writing, and he saw this is the advice that a person he eats fast, and he eats fast. He doesn't waste his whole day, his whole afternoon eating and hanging out and eating and talking and and the likes like this. Whether he'll eat and take his need and move, he'll eat and take his need and move and go on about his business that which he's striving for. He'll get his nourishment and then he will he will proceed. And likewise, whenever he's walking, you know, I'll be wa walking slow, and he's walking quickly. He's taking care of business. If he's trying to go somewhere, he's trying to get there. He's not going to run. And the likes like this, he's not going to run in, any, in a manner that's not proper and, and, and that's not from the good manners. And the likes like that, but he'll be moving quickly. And he'll move and he, like he has purpose, like he's going somewhere, he has something to do. And the likes like this, and also in writing. 
and also in writing. And he's able to write quickly. He's able to catch the benefits. And the likes like this, this is also very, very beneficial for a student of knowledge to practice ad imla, to practice ad imla dictation, that he's able to write, he's able to follow with the pen, he hears what he hears and he's able to write it down uh, and in the Arabic language. In the English language, likewise, but any of the goal is to do that in Arabic. And that means first and foremost, he has to learn how to write properly. And he has to learn how to write and the imla and the rules of imla and when to put hamza and when to put wow and when to put alif and when to put yeah. All of these rules, he has to learn those affairs. That's from seeking knowledge. And then he has to learn how to do that proficiently. Proficiently. If he can do that, then he can catch many benefits. I know individuals that were in my classes with me, they graduated with me, some of them from Al Yemen specifically. These brothers here, they were very proficient. Uh, I remember them specifically. And one of them, uh, he would write everything the teacher said in class. Uh, until I still had, we, we, all of us would have notebooks, we're writing and, and what we could take in class. There's one student, he would write everything that teachers could, everything literally, he, he would write everything. How do we know that? Because he became known for that and, he, and then his notebook in the end, it would be placed in the student services place and it would be printed and then the brothers would, we would read it and go over it and he, as review, as review for the tests. And his notes would be like that. I was reviewing some of my notes from the Jami, and I seen his book the other day, one of them. And his notes is there. We used to read that and review it, and he would even write in there that, <laughs> his, and even whenever the teacher he made, like, he's writing everything. He never left nothing. He never, MashaAllah, Allahumma barik alayhi. Allahumma barik alayhi. So he's proficient in writing. Proficient in writing. This is very beneficial. But there's ways to do that. He was writing every single word as it comes. Uh, the other ways you can do it is you can write points. Uh, instead of writing everything, maybe instead of writing exactly how he speaks, put the masdar there. The masdar there. That to summarize all of that, you put the masdar. And then you like this, and he, uh, in order to, to, to summarize like that. And he, but uh, whatever is easy. Whatever is easy. From the beneficial ways to become strong, and then after learning how to write Arabic and understand, is to listen to audios. Listen to audios, uh, for example, Sheikh Fouzan, Hafizullah, and try to take notes as best as you can. Try to write every single thing. If he gets too fast, you stop it and rewind it. And you do it again until you wrote the whole lesson. And until you wrote, until you wrote the whole lesson. You, you keep doing this a little bit, then by the time, if you, give, if you get success to sit with the scholars, you will be able to keep up. So this is all uh, very beneficial. This is all very beneficial. So the person who has time to learn how to write fast, <laughs> He doesn't have time to argue with the people and debate with the people and, 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 and you know, he's this and you're that and I'm not, you know, all this type of, he doesn't have time for this, this, this quarreling and these things like this or, or anything else, brother. And he, he's going to be busy like this. His time is going to be dedicated to this. And he's not going to, and he, learning how to write fast, that, that, that requires time, practice, effort, diligence. And he, so that's not even the goal. That's <laughs> That, that's, a, that's a minor goal to reach the main goal, to benefit. Yani? So this is something that requires time. That's what he's saying. So a, 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 a student of knowledge, he will not waste his time. He will not waste his time, uh, except for what is needed. Like he's saying here, eating, sleeping, and the likes like this, and, and, and relaxation. And even then, he, he will sometimes need to rest. And he's sometimes a person who will study and review and read and research until he just can't handle. And his, his mind, it just it becomes very heavy. Uh, on his heart. So now he will, re he will relax. He will do some type of a, uh, permissible recreation with his children or with his brothers or by himself uh, jogging or running or, or, or whatever is, is good for him that's allowed and permissible in order to reju re rejuvenate his, his, his desire and to revive his soul and the likes like this and to remove that, that weight that was on his heart and on his chest and to come back and to the books and to the knowledge or to the lessons strong again. Strong again. So even then, his intention is, yeah, I need to uh, to give his soul the need, what it needs in order to come back. So the one who's like this, his whole life is in worship. His whole life is in worship and, and seeking knowledge, and devoting himself to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. There's a benefit here in the original text. Yani and Noah, he mentioned after this. Yani that yani after the word raha. Except for, and he will not spend any of his time in other than knowledge, except for what he has to take care of with regards to his food and his sleeping uh, and his relaxation. And then actually, these words are slightly different in the summarization, but any after this point here, 
He said, Rahimahullah, wa laysa bi'aqilin, wa laysa bi'aqilin man amkanahu darajatu warathat al-anbiya, thumma fawwataha, thumma fawwataha, wa laysa bi'aqil. It's not from the, the person, he's not, he's not sound, he doesn't have a sound mind. Man amkanahu darajatu warathat al-anbiya, thumma fawwataha. He doesn't have a sound mind, the one who has the ability, he has the ability to reach the level of the inheritors of the prophets, and he let it go. And then he let it go. And he likes some of our youth, for example. Wallahi, some of our youth, they're sharp and they're bright. And their minds are crisp and they understand fast. And they memorize quickly. And they like like this. And then they spend their time playing games. Uh, or, or, or lost in their worldly life. Or, 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 or something that is less beneficial. Or trying to do it by themselves without taking guidance from the people who have experience. And the likes like this. And so therefore, the, 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 it's, they're, they're going to miss out. They have the opportunity to reach the level of the inheritance of the prophets. But many of them are negligent with regards to that. And no, he's saying, had the lace to be aqil. He's like somebody, he lost his mind. He lost his mind. What is the best thing that you, the best rank that somebody in life today could reach? What is the best rank in life for mankind? The best thing of mankind, that, that the best blessing he could receive of all mankind. The highest level. Prophethood, nubuwa. To receive prophethood. Is that possible for us? It's not possible for us. And he, but after that, what's the next level? To be They're inheritors of the prophets. To reach the level of the inheritors of the prophets. So the, 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 the greatest people after the prophets and messengers, they're the inheritors of the prophets and messengers. So the one who has the ability, he has the ability, he's been blessed with this quality of cleverness and, and the likes like this and, and with a sharp mind and intelligence and then he lets it go because of laziness. Or because of distractions and the likes like this. This person is as if he's, it's as if he's saying, لَيْسَ بِعَاقِلٍ لَيْسَ بِعَاقِلٍ مَنْ أَمْكَنَهُ دَرَجَةُ وَرَثَةِ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ ثُمَّ فَوَّتَهَا ثُمَّ فَوَّتَهَا So that you should, should listen to this. If they feel in their self they have this desire or they have this ability to learn knowledge and to benefit and to bear that and to bear learning and to, and to sit any time after time, hour after hour, reviewing, reviewing and, and the likes like this, then they should strive to, to reach that level. And those who are truthful and sincere, they will find that Allah, He will give them that, that which they hope for. He will give them that which they hope for. So this is something you need to keep in mind. Instead of what some people do today, if they find that their child is very bright intelligence, they'll say, oh, he's going to college in America, or he's going to go and be a doctor, or he's going to go be a, 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 an engineer like this. And then the one who's not smart, the one who's not bright, oh, send him to the masjid, let him memorize Quran. Like this, this is, uh, this is the type of idea that some people they have and in some of the Muslims they have especially in some of the Muslim lands they look at their children the one who's really smart mashallah getting ready to be a doctor to be, to, to be some great engineer or in the worldly life makes a lot, lots of money for us and the one who's slow and the one who's not bright and the life send him to the masjid let him go learn the Quran this is completely backwards rather the one who is bright the one who is swift send him to the masjid let him learn the Qur'an, let him learn the rulings, and let him, learn, let him sit with the people of virtue and the people of knowledge. Let him become from the inheritance of the prophets. Let him be a light and a lamp. Let him be a light and a lamp for his community and, and a means of guidance. And as for the doctors and, and, and the likes like this, then indeed then we have plenty of them. We have plenty of them. So he says, وَمَا أَجْمَلَ قَوْلَ الشَّافِعِي رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ حَقٌ عَلَى طَلَبَةِ الْإِلْمِ بُلُوغُ غَايَةِ جُهْدِهِمْ في الاستكثار من العلم والصبر على كل عارض دون طالبه والإخلاص وإخلاص النية لله تعالى في إدراك علمه نصا واستنباطا والرغبة إلى الله تعالى في العون عليه في العون عليه So he says now on how beautiful is the statement of the Shafi'i رحمه الله and no doubt it's very beautiful and how beautiful it is the statement of a Shafi rahimahullah that it's a, it's a right upon the students of knowledge in order to, to reach the, the peak uh, that, they, that they strive, the peak of their efforts to increase in knowledge, to increase in knowledge, and that they give their greatest effort, that they give their greatest effort to increase and to obtain more knowledge, and that they be patient uh, upon everything that, uh, comes, that comes to them, and every challenge, everything that comes to them and in the path of seeking knowledge. And they be patient with that. And sometimes maybe he'll be faced with poverty. Maybe sometimes he'll be faced with this challenge or that challenge. Maybe he will not get accepted in the university as, as he thought or as he was hoping. Or maybe this or maybe that. Or maybe he will get accepted but then he can't 
travel because of this reason or that reason. And so many things can happen to a person while he's uh, on the path to seeking knowledge. He's saying that you have to be patient in the face of all of that. Somebody, for example, he should not apply to the Jamia and have high hopes to seek knowledge, then not get accepted and say, Khalas, I'm not going to be a student of knowledge. Because it's not a condition to go to the Jamia to be a student of knowledge, although no doubt it's beneficial. And it's from the best means and keys today to truly benefit and from the easiest way, especially from the universities like Al Medina, where they're going to give you a free ride and pay for your way and pay for your trip and pay for your stay. And then you're going to be along with that close and next to all of the, the greatest scholars that are alive today. This is a great opportunity, yani financially. Financially and also yani spiritually and the deen and the fact that he will not have to pay to go there They're gonna pay for him But even if he did not even if he did not get accepted He will still not give up rather he will make efforts to save money and he will go Especially now in these days to go to, to Saudi Arabia is the doors are open now to go to Medina right now The doors are open now and our days the doors were closed So we, we couldn't go there and you will find and this is something that I witnessed the students not every not every time but it's something that was uh, apparent the students who had previously spent their own money to study, they had previously went, spent their own money. They were already studying before they got accepted to the Jamia on their own money. On their own wealth, whenever they reach the Jamia, they're the ones that are striving and working hard. And many of the students that just came to the Jamia and they got a free ride and the likes like this, you find them in the university, they're lazy. They're lazy and they're just going along and they're just passing the test and they're not benefiting from the scholars and the likes like this. But the students to themselves before they came, they're, they're already in Egypt, for example, or they've already been to Yemen, or they're in their communities, they're already striving and, and, and doing their best to learn. Whenever they got accepted to the Jamia, they took it and ran with it, and they benefited from their time the much, as much as, as they can. So this is yani, a sign of true ragba. A person, he will take his own money, and, he, and he'll go. For example, you, take your, you have a car, sell your car, and go, over, go to Egypt. That, that, that's what I did. So I sold my car, and the like, 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 and you take your money you get from, uh, for example, uh, uh, some tax returns, and you go for one year, two years, and and send your application. Maybe you'll get accepted, but even if you don't get accepted, this will not be the end of your your desire to seek knowledge, and that's the point, and that's the point. Yeah. So no doubt this statement of Al Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah Taala is very beneficial. That it's a right upon the students of knowledge that they strive the, their greatest effort to uh, to increase in knowledge, to increase in knowledge. And no matter how much one learns or how high his position may come in knowledge, he will never stop learning. He will never stop learning. And the people of knowledge, they mention that uh, that a person of knowledge, a scholar, he will still, he will remain, he will still, he will remain a scholar so long as he seeks knowledge. And he thinks that if he had reached the limit, then, he, then indeed he's ignorant. And so the people of knowledge, they'll, uh, a student of knowledge, he will continue to be a student so long as he's alive. He will continue always learning and increasing and, uh, and uh, seeking knowledge. And seeking knowledge, this is what he's saying. And, he, and likewise, be patient with every hardship or difficulty, every challenge that comes in the path, in the path of knowledge. And never stop. And never stop. And he says, along with that, to have a sincere and a pure intention for the sake of Allah. For the sake of Allah, and this is the, the, the point and the most important issue, to do all of that, and he, for the sake of Allah, seeking his reward and his pleasure, in order to obtain the knowledge, yani by way of uh, the nas, and he mean directly from the text, and likewise by comprehension and understanding, and be having the gifts of knowledge, and being able to derive the benefits and see them, yani, and to see them and to obtain them, yani, from, from, having the, from having the keys, from having the keys, having the ability after learning the text, to derive the benefits and see them oneself. He's saying to strive to, to reach this level and to seek uh, the, the, the reward and to hope, uh, to have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeking his help. And he have high hope in Raghbah in Allah azza wa jal that Allah will help him do that. That Allah will help him do that. Any who have trust and reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Sahih Muslim, uh, in the, the chapter of Mawaqeet uh, al-Salah, about uh, the, the, the chapter of the times of the prayer. And he, after Imam Muslim, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned a number of narrations, the Hadith Abdullah ibn Amr. And he mentioned these different chains uh, of this narration, a number of different chains. And then the manner that he arranged them and ordered them in order to clarify the times of this prayer, the times of the prayer. After this, he mentioned a narration which is considered maqtu'ah. And it's not, and it's something that Imam Muslim, he rarely does. In his work, there's nothing but al-hadith and marfu'ah. 
And that's the whole purpose and the wisdom from authoring this work. And this work is different from the work of Bukhari. In Bukhari, he has the same goal, but along with that, he will add uh, narrations from the companions or the tabi'in in order to bring extra benefits. Had Imam Muslim, he did not do that. He just mentioned narrations only to the extent that he did not even mention chapter titles. To the extent he did not even, he just mentioned the book of Salat, book of Iman. And after that, there's no chapter titles. But he mentioned all the narrations in an arrangement as if there's a chapter title. And he bought, bought by subject matter. But there's no chapter title. But there's no chapter title. This is in order to avoid having anything in there, having anything in his book except for the statements of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But in this particular place, in the book of Salat, he mentioned a narration from from, from, from someone from the Tabi'in or Atba' Tabi'in. And a hadith al maqtu'ah and it's the narration of Yahya ibn Abi Kathir, Yamami. Yahya ibn Abi Kathir, Yamami. He died in year 132. And he mentioned uh, Ali Imam Muslim, rahimahullah, with his chain to him, that he said, لا يستطاع العلم براحة الجسم. لا يستطاع العلم براحة الجسم. The knowledge, and he, the, the, this, this narration likewise had been corrected by Khatib. And his wording, he says, لا يستطاع طالب العلم براحة الجسم. That's the meaning. That a person is not able to seek knowledge and to learn properly by having, uh, by, by being relaxed, and uh, with the comfort of the body, and he being in luxury and being in, in, in relaxed and enjoying oneself and the likes like this, he will never be able to, to obtain knowledge like this. Meaning that you cannot truly obtain knowledge until you go through difficult and hardship, except with the great difficulty and hardship. The people of knowledge they mentioned the wisdom, but. By Ali Imam Muslim putting this here is to clarify that any in order for him to get all of these narrations and all of these chains any of this particular narration like this and then to understand them and to arrange them in this beautiful manner and present them like this this was not very this was not easy this was something that, that was not easy even some of the salaf they used to when they would narrate to their teacher that one of them would say I think it's a shabi rahimahullah atainakaha majanin atainakaha bil majan we gave this narration to you for free. For free, and you you got this for nothing. He said, one of us we used to ride on we used to ride and, and travel uh, days and nights to get the likes of this narration. As for you, they were giving it to you for nothing, <laughs> and you're just sitting here like this. And he, so the 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 salaf, they went through much hardship and much difficulty to learn. And likewise, the person who's going to reach a level in knowledge, he also has to go through difficulty and hardship. <coughs> it's not going to be easy. Maybe he will not understand the first time, the second time, the third time. And the likes like this, for example, learning the Arabic language, it's not easy. It's not, it's not something that's simple that happens overnight. Especially if a person, he wants it to happen overnight. And he has the wrong intention, we've seen that. The one who wants to just start, run off talking immediately. He's not going to really get very far. He's not going to really get very far. And even if he learns how to say something, in the end he's not going to truly benefit from that. And he's not going to be strong in the Arabic language. And thus he will not be strong in the sciences uh, of Islam, which are in the Arabic language which are in the Arabic language. So he has to be patient. He has to go through hardship. He has to go through difficulty. His tongue is not working. It's not going right. It's not pronouncing the words properly. It's not, it's not comprehending. He's not getting it. Fahimta, la ma fahimtu. Like this, he's going through these affairs. La ma fahimtu, la ma fahimtu. But it, inshallah, if he continues and he's persistent, Allah will open the door for him. And then eventually he'll be like, Alhamdulillah, fahimtu. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, I understand now. I, I understand now, it will come for him. It will come for him if he's persistent. And if he continues, inshallah, he will reach the, the goal. He'll reach the goal if he takes the proper means. He does not jump stages. And he's not lazy likewise. He gives the effort and he seeks the help of Allah Azza wa Jal. He will, he, will, he, will, he will see much benefit and much goodness. But the point is here that it requires hardship and difficulty. And he's going to have to go through hardship and difficulty. The people of Nara, as they say, Mil'u Raha, La Yudraku Bi Raha. Mil'u Raha, a Raha is this. This is the Raha, the palm. They say, Mil'u Raha la yudraku bi Raha. Raha also means relaxation and luxury, yani kicking back and having a good time, taking it easy. So to fill up your hand, yani just to get a little bit of something from this life, you're not going to get that by being lazy, kicking back and being relaxed. And he's not, we can say in the worldly language, you're not going to get a dollar sitting at home. You're going to have to get a job, and you're going to have to go work, you're going to have to make some effort, you're going to have to move. You're going to have to go through some hardship to make money, to have a house, to have a, to have a car, to, to, to have a family. And the likes like this, you have to make effort. So if that's the case with the worldly life, then the knowledge of the religion is more, is more serious. You're going to have to work hard. You're going to have to go through difficulty. The, 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 the people of not as they say, Had it not been for hardship and difficulty, then all of mankind would have been leaders and in the forefront. And but since it's hard and difficult, then not everyone is a leader, nor in the forefront. 
Only those who bear that hardship and they bear the, and they carry that weight and they and they face that difficulty and they go through those challenges and they deal with that seeking the help of Allah. They're the ones who are in, eventually in in the forefront. The people of the knowledge likewise they say So this is the case. This is the case. And this is the point from this issue here is to strive hard to seek knowledge and to strive hard to do it for the sake of Allah and to be truthful in that path and to be truthful in that path and to spend all of one's time and knowledge. And this is even uh, very uh, facilitated for us in these days, even in these lands. And the origins that we have seen, we take the knowledge from the mouth of the scholars. But any, that, that's the origin. But likewise, if one is not able to do that, he will not say, oh, well, I'm not going to learn that. Because now we have any, the, the next best thing, which are the life classes what are that are broadcast live, or the recordings of those live classes, and the life scientists. So although this is not the same thing, and a person, he will not receive the, the same benefit, uh, there's still a great benefit in that. There's still a great benefit in that. And even if a person, he was able to go sometime and sit with the scholars for, for some time, and then after that to be diligent to benefit from the audios on top of that, yani this would also be a great means for him to proceed and, and, and to advance and to have a great foundation and benefit and knowledge. And the any uh, person, for example, he can take the, some of the books uh, and uh, and listen uh, listen to them at his time and and benefit from the recordings and, and the likes and go over knowledge like this. Or even if he's busy riding in the car, all of these affairs he can benefit. Hada wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.